Hey guys, so this is a video for people who are just getting into Ableton and might not really get exactly how it works. So this is kind of an intro video to just give you a basic overview. Now it might take a couple watches for you to really start to understand all the features that it has and, and don't worry too much about it. You know, just watch it a couple times and you know, let it sink in as it does. And also understand that this is just an overview and many of the other videos will get more specific on what Ableton is capable of doing and all the features. So let's go ahead and get started. So Ableton is obviously a multi-track recorder and it allows you to record as many audio tracks or MIDI tracks as you would like. And for example, I've got two audio tracks here and two MIDI tracks. MIDI tracks are basically going to be for recording instruments that are inside your computer and the audio tracks are going to be for recording parts that are outside your computer. That's the easiest way to think about it. So what would go on an audio track would be something like uh, loops and samples. You could record your voice or guitar or violin or if you've got a hardware synthesizer. All of that type of stuff would be on an audio track. Whereas a MIDI track would be more of virtual instruments that you would use and I'll get into that in a little bit. Now, what makes Ableton unique is that it has two separate windows. So this window that we're looking at here is called the session window. And this is like a jam session window. This is where you can drop several clips and clips are just audio loops and parts that uh, you can put together to kind of start to create a jam or, or to build yourself or to build some ideas and things like that. If you hit the tab key, it will flip over to the arrangement window. And this window is more familiar because it's linear and it's very similar to programs like Acid or Cubase or Pro Tools, you know, that sort of thing. Basically what happens is you build your ideas in the session window and you can make what we call scenes. And what a scene is, is it can be a, a group of instruments. So for example, I might want to set all the loops for all the parts that would make up an intro to my song. And maybe the next part would be a first verse. The third part would be a bridge. The fourth part would be a chorus. The fifth part would be an outro or whatever. You know, you could have as many scenes to do whatever you would like. But basically that gives you the ability to kind of rearrange the way that your song's playing and, and jam it out. And while you're figuring out how you want to construct your song, you could be recording that jam session into your arrangement window. And basically, what that means is once your jam session's done, you've got that whole jam session laid out on all separate tracks. So it's much easier for you to just kind of cut, copy, and paste uh, your way into fine-tuning your song. Now, another great thing about Ableton that I really like is that there's no windows that jump out. Everything that you need is within this platform. So there's no windows that are going to be falling behind other windows. You've always got access to everything that Ableton has to offer. So the way Ableton works this is it just allows you to hide parts with arrows. I can hide this window here. I can hide this groove pool here and so forth. Now over on this side, you're going to see icons like this on a lot of instruments and uh, this is kind of how things are going to open up. So let me walk you through all of these over here. So I'll turn them off to start with. This here is your ins and outs and that's just the IO icon. This here are your sends. So by default you get two sends but you could have as many send tracks as you would like. And here are your returns. So the returns correspond to the sends. So as you can see, there's only two return tracks, which means there's there's two sends to represent those. If I come over here, I could create another return track. And now as you'll see, I've got three returns and I've got three sends. So that, that's basically the way that works. This is your mixer section here. So you've got your volume, you're panning left and right. This is a uh, track on and off. So if you've got it off, it just won't play. Solo is pretty obvious. It'll just play the track that you're soloing. And this is how you record, record 
and arm the track. So as you heard, my voice came through when I hit record on the audio track. Now if I hit that on a MIDI track, and if I have an instrument, so let me just drag in an operator instrument here. So this is a, a synth here. So when I arm this track, then I could actually hit keys on a keyboard and it'll play. And whatever track that you've got the arm on, on your MIDI track, it will play that instrument. So that's how you select one instrument your keyboard is going to be playing at any given time. Over here, this is a track delay. Sometimes you, you find that you want to inch up your whole track by a few milliseconds or back a few milliseconds to give it a different kind of groove. Or, for example, you might copy two of the same tracks and send one to the left speaker and one to the right. And by separating the track by a few milliseconds, it'll create more of a stereo effect. So there's a number of reasons to use track delay, but you don't really need to concern yourself too much with that. It's not used incredibly often. And then the X is over here. This is a crossfader. And this is used more for when performing as, as a DJ tool. As you can see over here, you have an A and a B. If you turn this to the left, it'll play all the parts that are on A. And if you turn this to, it'll play all the parts that are on B. So you could cross fade between your A's and your B's. And of course, we'll get more into DJing and all that stuff in other videos. Now, another real important feature is that Ableton has this over here, this little arrow icon. And this here is going to explain pretty much everything in Ableton. So if I drag my cursor to different parts of an instrument or to different parts of Ableton, what you'll notice is that it will explain each and every different icon. So this is a really great way to help you learn everything that's going on in Ableton. And then once you're familiar with that, you can just click this arrow here and it'll just hide it again. Okay, so let's get into the browser here. So this first window here is, this is where all your internal instruments and effects are going to be. So you've got, these are all separate instruments. Uh, the drum rack is a drum machine instrument. Instrument rack is you could kind of create your own combinations of instruments and uh, effects change and things like that. The analog is a virtual analog synth. Collision is a great instrument for uh, creating like percussive sounds and different parts like that. And it can do a number of other things too. Electric is like a, a virtual electric piano. External instrument is a tool that you can use to route an external instrument into, into one of Ableton's tracks. Impulse is another drum instrument. Operator is an FM synthesizer. Sampler, well, that's obviously a sampling instrument. And Simpler is, is like a sampler, but it's kind of scaled down. Tension is a really nice instrument to get more guitar type tones and things like that. And then you have all your MIDI effects. And these are really only going to work on your MIDI tracks, but uh, there's a lot of great features. And once again, I'll get into those in other videos. And then all your audio effects. Now this icon here, this is where all your third party plugins are going to be. So all my third party audio effects and, and third party synthesizers are going to be in this window right here. And while I got you in this window, I should probably show you a little something about the third party effects. So let me just drag in an effect here. And I'll drag in a, um, a synth as well. So I could drag it right down into this area right here. And as you can see, the, uh, the window opens up. Now, depending on how your preferences are set up, this window might not automatically open up. I've just got mine to automatically do that. But if you don't see that, what you'll see is just these little squares right here. And I know it doesn't really look like an instrument at all. So the way that you open up your instruments is there's a little wrench tool 
right here, this little icon. So if you click on that, that will open and close that tool. Okay, and same with the effects. Whereas with internal tools, you'll see all the parameters right here in front of you. For example, if I drag in an audio effect here. Now let me pull in a bunch of audio effects here because there's something that I want to show you. And I'm just randomly pulling, in, pulling things in. So let's say you've loaded your track with a bunch of effects here. Now you're kind of lost because you're like, well, where's my synthesizer and how do I get back to it? Well, what you can do, you could either kind of scroll back and forth if you got like a touchpad mouse or whatever. This area right here, you'll see a black border rectangle and this is showing you what you're focused on here. So you could scroll back like that. Another thing you can do is you could right click and they could just choose whatever synth or effect that you would like access to. So if I want the frequency shifter, boom, and it'll show it up right here. If I want the compressor, there we go. And it'll just show up with the, uh, the title bar here. Okay, so this is our, uh, our third party effects and synths. And now what we have here with these, we have three different browser locations. So you could choose wherever you want the browser to go just by running through here. And then it'll remember every time you open up these locations. And when you change the location, then it will uh, remember the new locations. So these are just saved locators to make it quick to get around. If I wanted to uh, drag in an audio clip or something like that, I could just drag this right into here. And it's the same with the arrangement window too. If I want to bypass the session window, I could just hit tab and pull something right into the arrangement window as well. So it works both ways. What I'm also able to do is, for example, I could click here on samples and come up here to the search window and I could search a specific instrument. So I'll just search, for example, kick. And then as you can see, it will list all the things that uh, that have the word kick in it. So then down here, as you can see, I've got this little headphone icon. And if I turn that on, I could listen to each part. Now you can also control your cue volume level. So if you so if you tab over to your session window, turn your mixer on, this right here is the volume of your cueing. If I turn this down, it'll obviously be a lower volume. And what you'll notice up here is I've got a little magnifying glass or circle or whatever you want to call it. If I click on it and drag down, it will get in closer. And if I click on it and drag up, it'll go f further away. That's how you zoom into something if you want. Now what you have up here, these numbers list what bar you're on. So every four beats is one bar, uh, one, two, three, four. That would be one bar. And then down here, this is actual time. So this is the actual length of your song or your part or you know whatever you've got. So these give you a clear idea of the length of your song by bar or by time, which is really important. Now, what you notice is you've got these lines here. And these lines represent a certain resolution. If I come down here, you'll see that this is one half. And that means it's one half of a bar. If I come up, now this resolution represents one bar. If I come in really close, now this represents one sixteenth of a bar. So down here, you can either choose a specific resolution or you can use an adaptive grid, meaning as you get closer, the resolution gets smaller. So as I keep going down, as you can see, you can get really 
tight resolution. Now let me show you a little bit about clip properties. So with the MIDI track, I could just double click on one of these windows here and it creates a MIDI clip. Now there's nothing in it until I enter notes, like so. And now I've entered in a part here. So this here is your clip properties. And if you come over here, like I said, you'll find these little icons in Ableton. This will allow you to open up more of the properties. Now, if you want to see your instrument and effects properties, you want to click on the title of the track. And then this will show your instrument and your effects. So the title shows this window. Clicking on the actual clip shows the clip property window. And then the same here with audio. We've got no effects in here right now, but if we did, this is where they would show up. And then if I click on the clip, this shows me all the properties of the audio clip. Once again, if you don't see everything, it's because these are not turned on. So up here, I'll just highlight a couple basic features. So right here, you've got your tempo and you could just click there and, and type in the tempo that you want. So if we want 125, really, really easy. Or you could just click and drag. If you drag down, it'll bring your tempo down. If you drag up, it'll make it faster. You could also do a tap tempo, one, two, three, four, and then it will give you the tempo there. This here will, this is more for DJing and it will nudge your audio faster or slower a little bit. So if you're trying to beat match with CDs or, or some other instrument, this will allow you to do that. This here is your metronome. Over here shows you what bar you are on here, which right now it's not important because we don't have anything in here. But if I double click on the stop button, as you can see now we're right at 111, which is the very beginning. Obviously, play, stop, and record. By hitting this record button, this is going to allow you to record what's in the session window into the arrange window. So. If I were to now start this scene here, it's going to play both of these clips at the same time on the scene. So, And then I'll switch to this scene. And then when I stop, if I hit my tab key, what you'll see is it, it recorded everything into the arrange window just as it was played. So now I could come in and I could do further editing if I want to these parts or I could extend these out or you know do whatever I'd like. So let me explain overdub a little bit here. So if I come over here to my session window and I've got my MIDI part here, now, if I have this track armed and I have overdub on, when I play notes, it will record them in. And if I've got this off, I could kind of jam to it without recording. So now that the track is armed, it's ready to record. So I'll just and now I play along. And let's say I like that, I'll just turn on overdub and... and as you can see, these notes recorded right in. So that's what the overdub is right there. This icon right here, if it is on, that means that it's going to focus on clips that are playing in here. And if it's off, it's going to focus on the clip that's playing here. In other words, if I have automation on this clip, that doesn't correspond to what's on this clip. So whatever is recorded here is going to take precedence. So think of it like this. You've got 
two different parts on one track and Ableton has to choose which to listen to. If this is on, then it's going to listen to the session window clip. And if it's off, then it's going to listen to what's in the arrange window. Here is your pencil tool. So let me just give you a quick example. So in here, I've got, let me just go to volume here. You basically have two tools. You have the cursor and you have the pencil tool. So if you're using the cursor, you would double click to make elbows and then you could kind of drag things where you want them. Now, if you are using the pencil tool, what this is going to do is, as I told you about the resolution here, 1 16th, whatever the resolution of this box is what's going to be affected. So I could, if I click here, it will automate that whole box. Or I can drag like so. So the pencil tool works by the resolution and the cursor tool is more linear, meaning I can kind of bend and play with these a little bit more. And it doesn't have to be on the grid. So that's a basic overview of Ableton Live.